good morning welcome to my channel welcome back to my channel whichever one applies i am annette if you are new here today we are going to be discussing formula just to be clear this video is in no way meant to try and push you one way or the other encourage or discourage yada yada it is simply a guide if you will so whether you are about to have a baby and you know you're just going to be formula feeding the whole time whether you're breastfeeding and looking to supplement or transition this video may be of some assistance because not a lot of people who are new to this realize what kind of a struggle the formula switch is what i call the formula dance because it really is a fucking dance it's a it's a jazz recites i'm gonna go through this as it applies to my own situation in that I'm not breastfeeding at all, I'm just going right to formula, but it should still be helpful even if uh, you are planning on starting out with uh, breast milk. So basically, from the hospital onward, if you're going to be using formula, the hospital will supply you with formula while you are there. Typically, the hospital will give you the basic version of whatever brand that hospital carries. So if it's Similac, they'll be giving you the, uh, the blue one, <laughs> whatever that one's called. Uh, if it's Nestle, it'll be their standard version. And if it is Enfamil, they'll be giving you the Gentle Ease. I'm pretty sure that is their new standard now is the Gentle Ease. So that is entirely what you're gonna be starting off with. Um, typically, if you have any formula left over in your little ready to feed packs that they have at the hospital, they will let you take those home. Um, I think you can also request to take a package home with you. It depends on your hospital, really. Also keeping in mind, I'm in Canada. I'm in Ontario specifically, so that can also vary depending on where you are. But really, your first step is to use up that formula and see how that goes. Because to be perfectly honest, you may end up lucky and your baby might be perfectly fine with the standard version of whatever brand you're giving them. Uh, sometimes they might even be just fine with the standard version, but not necessarily that brand, which I will get into in a minute. Now, I'm pretty sure the standard for trying formula is to give them a week and a half to two weeks on one type of formula and see how that goes. Look to see how they're handling that particular formula. Um, I liked to only give them a week uh, with my first that's all it took because sometimes it can be deceiving so sometimes you'll switch a brand or switch a type uh, of formula and it'll make a difference for like three nights and then all of a sudden they're having a new problem or the old problem is now back so let's go through the signs that your baby needs to switch formula the main signs you're going to be looking for are excessive spit up very slow weight gain which uh, if this is a problem um, likely you'll have noticed that there are other issues from this list before the very slow weight gain. Increased fussiness following feedings, bloody stool which can be related to a lactose allergy, severe constipation, uh, typical symptoms of an allergy especially in infants are things like egg, uh, eczema and skin rashes, uh, vomiting or gagging during or after feedings, straight up refusing their bottle, <laughs> extra fussiness, uh, wheezing, swelling hives and those are pretty much all the standard things you would want to look for it is incredibly unlikely let me just say it's not that it never happens but it is very unlikely that your baby will have a severe allergy to the formula so um especially if you're looking to just start on formula i wouldn't worry about it um typically if you were breastfeeding or pumping first uh, you'd have a pretty good idea from your own diet and your own breast milk whether or not your baby has some kind of uh, milk allergy or that kind of thing. So where do you start? It's a pretty good idea before you have the baby to accumulate samples of formula. This was how I did it. Um, I signed up for pretty much every formula sample pack before I had my first. They do keep in mind with the samples only send you the standard versions of formula. So I had a can of Similac standard, I had a can of, uh, we had the Gentle Ease from the hospital. I also had an extra Gentle Ease sample because I didn't know what they'd be giving me in the hospital and I had uh, several Nestle ready to feed samples that were also the basic formula. My baby's issues were increased fussiness, uh, excess spit up, like ex in incredible amounts of spit up. It was just unbelievable. <laughs> that was my main notifier, if you will. That was the red flag that I needed to switch formulas. So we started him with the Gentle Ease. 
I did have uh, the Similac and the Nestle. Because the Nestle was in the ready feed, we tried that one first uh, because liquid formulas tend to be a lot easier on their tummy than powdered formulas simply because you don't have to worry about the mixing process. So it's already mixed, it's already smooth and liquid, so that eliminates one potential problem with the formula. The Nestle did not work, neither did the Similac standard. So in my particular situation, uh, my parents had informed me that when I was a baby as well as my siblings, absolutely none of us could handle um, the dairy-based formula. I initially thought about picking up the Similac lactose sensitive. Uh, there is also a lactose free version of the Enfamil, but I didn't end up going that route uh, because my parents uh, basically went on a formula hunt for me while I was in tears one evening <laughs> and they came back with a soy based formula. So we did go right to the soy, initially with the Enfamil soy, which made a huge, huge difference initially. So the spitting up wasn't a problem. The issue with the Enfamil for us ended up being that it was very thick. Uh, and so this seems to be pretty standard with all of the Enfamil formulas, is that all of their consistencies, um, powdered or liquid, are very, very heavy. So what ended up happening was he did end up getting pretty constipated. He'd have a really rough tummy afterwards. Um, he was getting full a little too fast, so he wasn't getting enough formula to actually fill him up but because it was so heavy. He would stop drinking his formula a little earlier, so that was the problem we had with that one. The next one I switched to was the Nestle Soy. That one again seemed to work for the first couple days, and then what I found with that one, which again I also found with the standard Nestle, so this is kind of across the board with each brand, so just keep these things in mind because some of it may bother your baby, some some babies may not be bothered by these things at all. But with the Nestle, I found that all of the formulas were just incredibly bubbly. So it caused a lot of gas problems. So much gas. It's like the baby was just in pain the whole time. And then he would burp so much that he'd end up puking up all the formula anyway. So that again didn't work. What we did end up trying next was Similac. And the Similac soy or the Isomil, which I believe is what it's called, um, or there's the two different kinds. One just has added DHA, the other one doesn't. The Similac soy ended up being perfect. It was a life changer, it was a game changer for approximately the first six months. And that was all he ended up drinking. Now, here was the thing, is that he also ended up becoming uh, irritated by soy after six months. So, although it was the winning formula, all of a sudden, he hit about the six month mark and then all of a sudden we were having these problems again. So we had the constipation, the extra gas, the puking, the like it was just, it was the same formula dance all over again. So I knew I wanted to stick with Similac because all of the Nestle's were way too foamy and we didn't want extra gas problems and all of the all of the Enfamils were just way too heavy and I didn't want any more constipation or heavy tummy feelings. So best bet for us in our situation was to stick with the Similac because that standard formula just kind of seems to sit better with him. It doesn't have those issues. Uh, it's lighter and it's not as airy as the Nestle. The first thing we tried was the Similac sensitive tummy, not lactose sensitive, the sensitive tummy, which is the broken down, extra broken down, whatever formula one. Now they have Similac advanced, which is silver. Um, never tried that one. Uh, that one came out after my baby was already off of formula, at least where I am anyway. So we did go with the uh, sensitive tummy, which worked for actually the first week, and I thought that was the ticket. I thought that was it. And then after one week, no, he was right back to just constantly being miserable and throwing up and it didn't work again. Which is where I decided to switch to the orange one, which is the Similac Lactose Sensitive, which was the one I wanted to try him on in the first place. Who knows if it would have worked then, we can't go back in time and tell. But the good news is it 100% worked the second time around. So once we got to the six month mark and had to switch up his formula one last time, it switched to the orange Lactose Sensitive one and that one worked beautifully, absolutely beautifully. That turned out to be, that was it. To be perfectly honest, it didn't surprise me because I personally am 
uh, lactose intolerant, I have to have lactose free everything. <laughs> Which also meant that when he turned a year and we switched him to whole milk, I would only buy him the lactose free uh, homogenized milk which is a little bit more expensive but honestly it he can actually drink it and keep it down so that was worth it <laughs> I'm gonna end up doing with this baby obviously we're gonna be giving him the formula that our hospital provides which I believe is still the standard um, Enfamil which is fine while we're at the hospital but as soon as we get him home I will be um, switching him to the uh, lactose sensitive one I just don't want to have to <laughs> if I have to do the dance again from there I will but I feel like the lactose sensitive is going to be a good starting point for me just because I don't want to risk the soy irritation coming like it did with my first one so that personally is the one that I am going to be going with uh, because of my battle in the past <laughs> in the recent past with formula this was a little blabbery. Um, I'm not a professional in any of this. I'm just somebody who had a very long formula struggle. Um, I feel like I have pinned down the main problems with each of the brands. I don't know about the like no-name brands, the Walmart brands. I never used any of those. But out of the three major, that's four, out of the three major brands, take note of what the issues are with those ones. So like, Across the board, it seems like Nestle is just way too bubbly, um, causes a lot of gas. So if you're using Nestle and you find that that is a problem, consider switching to something a little less airy. And if you are starting out with Enfamil um, and you find that they get very full hard bellies, maybe go with something a little lighter. Maybe that baby would do better with the Nestle one. I don't know. Every baby is different. And I know this one is not going to be like my last one. So, I mean, the lactose sensitive may not end up working for him, which if that's the case, then so be it. But I think I found a good starting point for myself. So if you've noticed any of these problems with your babies, uh, or if when you have your baby, these things start coming up, or when you start switching from breast milk to formula and these things come up, hopefully these little tips helped you out. <laughs> Leave it a thumbs up if you feel like it deserves it. Uh, comment whatever you want down below. I appreciate it all the time. Feel free to subscribe if that's the thing you want to do and we'll see you in the next one.